Hi friends, welcome back to our YouTube channel. Today we have to discuss about implementation of half adder using 4x1 multiplexer in digital electronics course, digital logic design course and switching theory and logic design course. In the previous video, we are already discussed about some important videos such as implementation of half subtractor using 4x1 and 2x1 multiplexers, implementation of full adder and full subtractor using 8x1 and 4x1 multiplexers. If anybody wants, please refer that videos in my YouTube channel, Dibbele Srinivasarao and go to the playlist called STLD or DLD. Now, in this video, how to implement half adder using 4x1 multiplexer. Before going to that video, how, what is half adder? Half adder is a combinational circuit that is used for performing the addition operation between two bits. Half adder can take two inputs X and Y and produce two outputs sum and carry. Okay, simply we can say that it can take two inputs and it produce two outputs. Here, number of input variables that is equal to two that are X and Y. With the two input variables, how many number of possible input combinations we are getting? So that is 2 power n number of possible input combinations we are getting. After substituting n value as 2, then we are getting 4 possible input combinations. So that are starting from 0 and ending with 3. 0 to 3, that is 4 possible input combinations that are 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. So, these are the four possible input combinations. Now, we are adding these two bits. Consider the first row, x value 0, y value 0. So, 0 plus 0. Some value is 0. There is no carry is generated. Therefore, carry value is 0. Consider the second row, x value 0, y value 1. 0 plus 1 that is 1 there is no carry is generated therefore carry value is 0. Next consider the third row x value 1 and y value 0. 1 plus 0 that is nothing but 1 there is no carry is generated therefore carry value is 0. Consider the fourth row x value is 1 y value is 1. 1 plus 1, so that is nothing but 0 with the carry 1. 1 plus 1 is nothing but 0 with carry 1. Okay, so this is the sum output values and this is the carry output values for 4 possible input combinations. Next one. After finding out the sum value and carry value, this sum value can be represented in the form of min terms. So here we have to write sum of S is equal to sigma m of. Now to write the min terms here, first we have to consider the sum column. In that sum column, we are considering only ones, not considering the zeros. Here 1 is the, the corresponding possible input combination is 0, 1 and the corresponding min term number is 1. So, this column represents the min term numbers. Okay. Next one, here 1 is the, the corresponding input combination is 1, 0 and the min term number is 2. Only 2 ones are there, we are getting 2 min terms. So, the output variable sum can be represented in the form of sum of min terms that are 1 and 2. In the same way, we have to 
represent the carry output in terms of sum of min terms. So, sigma m of in the carry output column only once we are considering here one is that the corresponding possible input combination is 1, 1 and the min term number is 3. Okay. So, now sum and carry output values are represented in the form of min terms. Now, this entire half adder can be represented, implemented by using 4 by 1 multiplexer. Okay. So, we already know that 4 by 1 multiplexer can take 4 inputs and 1 output. The four inputs are I0, I1, I2 and I3 and one output is that is a sum output. Okay. Among that four input values at a time only one input is selected. That input can be selected by using selection lines. How many number of selection lines are required? to implement 4 by 1 multiplexer that can be calculated by using the formula first 4 by 1 multiplexer can be represented in the form of 2 power n into 1 okay now 4 can be written in the form of 2 powers so then we are getting 2 power 2 into 1 so in the place of n what is the value is there 2 so therefore n is equal to 2 where n is nothing but number of selection inputs number of selection inputs n is equal to 2 so that two selection inputs are s1 and s0 so here we have to write these two selection inputs S1 and S0. Here also we have to write S1 and S0. Now S1 and S0 values two selection input lines. With the two selection input lines, how many number of possible combinations? Four possible combinations we are getting. S1, S0 values are 0, 0. Equivalent decimal value is 0. I0 input is selected that can be sent as the output. Next, if S1, S0 values are 0, 1, I1 input is selected that can be sent as the output. Next, S1, S0 values are 1 and 0, the equivalent decimal value is 2. Therefore, I2 input is selected that can be sent as the output. Next, S1, S0 values are 1 and 1. The equivalent decimal value is 3. Therefore, I3 input is selected. Then that can be sent as the output. Okay. So, in this way, we have to find out number of selection input lines by using this formula. Next, once we are finding out the how many number of selection lines are required, so then we have to find out the I0, I1, I2, I3 values. Once we are getting I0, I1, I2, I3 values, based on the selection input lines, the particular input is selected. Whatever the value is present at the corresponding input, that input can be sent as the output. Next, how to find out I0, I1, I2, I3 values in? this multiplexer okay so here what in the sum of s is equal to sigma m of 1 and 2 some output can be represented as a sum of min terms 1 and 2 whatever the min terms that are present okay the corresponding here the min term 1 is that the correspond this input min term 1 can be mapped to i1 Okay, so then we are substituting value 1 here. Okay, whatever the min terms that are present in the sum output that can be mapped to the corresponding inputs and we are placing value 1. Next here min term 2 can be 
can be min term to can be mapped to input variable i2 and placing 1 whatever the min terms that are not present so for that min terms we are substituting value g so this is one procedure another procedure is whatever the values that are present in the sum output column directly we have to write these four values here we have to write first g do we have to write next one we have to write next one we have to write next zero we have to write okay next in the same way for carry output whatever the values are there that values we have to write here zero next here zero next here zero next here one so this procedure can be applied when number of input variables is equal to number of selection input lines number of selection input lines so here how many number of input variables are there the number of input variables is 2 so these are x and y how many number of selection input variables are there? That is S1 and S0. So that is 2. So whenever this condition is true, then you have to directly write whatever the values that are present in the sum output. That values we have to write here. Okay. So whatever the first value is there, that can be mapped to I0. Whatever the second value is there, that can be mapped to I1. Whatever the third value is there, that can be mapped to I2. Whatever the fourth value is there, that can be mapped to I3. Next, in the carry output column, whatever the first value is there, because 0 can be mapped to I0. Next, second value can be mapped to I1. Third value can be mapped to I2 fourth value can be mapped to I3 because the corresponding input combination is 1 1 1 1 the equivalent decimal value is a 3 so it can be mapped to I3 next here the corresponding input combination is 1 0 so this value can be mapped to I2 because its decimal value is 2 next here the corresponding input combination is 0 1 the equivalent decimal value is 1 so therefore it can be mapped to i1 here the corresponding input combination is 0 0 the equivalent decimal value is 0 therefore it can be mapped to 0 okay so in this way we have to write that the, whatever the values that are present in the sum output column and carry output column that can be mapped to I0, I1, I2, I3 whenever this condition is satisfied. Number of input variables is equal to number of selection input lines. Okay. Now, so after that, the input variable X can be assigned to selection input variable S1. The input variable y can be assigned to selection variable S0. So, therefore, S1 value contains X value, S0 value contains Y value. Here also, S1 value contains X, S0 values contains Y. Okay. So, the first input variable can be mapped to the selection line S1. The second input variable y can be mapped to the input selection input variable s0. Okay. Whenever this condition is satisfied. Okay. If, the, if this condition is satisfied, mapping the two input variables to two selection input lines. Whatever the values that are present in the sum, sum column that can be assigned to the input variables of the 4 by 1 multiplexer. Whatever the values that are present in the carry output column, that can be assigned to the input variables of 
4 by 1 multiplexer. Okay. Now, this is the circuit diagram for some output using 4 by 1 multiplexer. This is the circuit diagram for carry output using 4 by 1 multiplexer. So, this is the procedure we have to follow for implementing half adder using 4 by 1 multiplexer. So, these are the two 4 by 1 multiplexers are required to implement half adder using 4 by 1 multiplexer. The first diagram for sum output, the second diagram for carry output. So, thank you. Thank you one and all for watching this video. If you like this video, please click on the like button and click on the bell icon after subscribing my YouTube channel, Surdivvela Srinivas Rao. If you have any doubts, please put your doubts in the comment section. I will clarify your doubts. Don't forget to subscribe my YouTube channel, Divvela Srinivas Rao. For the remaining videos, please visit my channel Divvela Srinivas Rao and go to the playlist called STLD or DLD or Digital Electronics Course. And one more point is in the carry output only main term 3 is there. Main term 3 can be mapped to I3 so that its value can be assigned as 1. Whatever the main, ter main terms that are not present, that values are mapped with the zeros. Okay. Thank you. Thank you one and all for watching this video.